If you do come out to the Fort Concho National Historic Site, I want to give you a tip on the parking is to the west or across the street from the historic site. And you'll see the visitor sign, visitor center sign. And this is the visitor center here. And then in this whole installation covers about 40 acres. And not all of these buildings are accessible. I'll give you a quick glance around here. These are officers' quarters over here. I'm going to include a map. And I'll be able to go in and visit some of these places. There's the gazebo for uh, military uh, performances, actually, military band performances. And of course, every fort has a flagpole out on the parade grounds. And here we have examples of some wagons, saddles, harnesses. This is the standard ordnance cannons of the Frontier Army. All the time photograph. If I can get away from the reflection of the open doorway there. <laughs> it's like an actual photograph from the fort here. Actual cannon there. More informational information. Looks like this is model 1862 Gatling gun. I would not have been able to tell you that without an informational sheet here. And there is no informational sheet on this cannon. It's like about a two inch barrel, maybe two and a half inch barrel. And there's always a renovation going on. As a matter of fact, right next door here, looks like there might be a missing barracks or something of that nature. So, I think that is being reconstructed. Well, actually, here's a sign showing that this is a reconstruction site for the missing barracks and mess hall. You'll see that on the map, but you certainly want to see the buildings. This appears to be the only style of window in this building, made completely of stone. It is a square construction. Rather small, let's say 15 by 15 feet, and it was used to hold ordnance, or more specifically, black powder. There is the fort commissary, and right next door is the quartermaster's building or warehouse. <laughs> Supply house, all military stuff. And right over here is the headquarters. Go ahead on over there. That one is open, the other two are not. On the south end of the quartermaster's building, we have what is a replica cemetery. I'll say that, explained over here. And it is in honor of five specific soldiers. I noticed that the first one over here a William O'Neill. That makes me wonder if Bill O'Neill, former official Texas State historian, have some connection, family connection to that fellow. And looking a little bit closer, each one of these men lost their lives. Indian War activity. So now we are coming to the headquarters building. First thing I notice is that there are no 
wooden walkways here. It's all native stone. The concrete in between the cracks. Let's go inside. Maybe the wind won't be so bad out here. Get you over the plexiglass here. Here's the informational sheet over here. Post adjutant's office. Continue heading north. It's a clerk and orderly room. Lots of detailed information. There are a few folks who are interested in learning all the details. I'm sure that fissure has been converted to electricity. I imagine originally it ran off of whale oil, kerosene. What do you think? Put it down in the comments below. The court martial room. Hmm. Court. Courtroom. seating available besides what you've already seen. Large beautiful windows. I forget what those windows are called over the doorways. You can open those up. But he'd escape during the summertime. Here's large windows that you can open up where the upper window slides down or the lower window slides up. And taking a little bit closer look. Appears that they use counterweights. That's what that pulley is for. Help raise those windows up and down by using counterweights on cords. And it appears we can't go upstairs. That's been blocked off. coat and hat rack right in front of the main door we have here the San Regimental headquarters a couple of dramas back there Our drum core uh, it's like there's some maps out on the table there the surveying equipment. They're smaller cast iron stove than those in the other rooms. And the office of the head honcho, the commanding officer. Looks like he gets the largest rooms and area in this whole building. Of course, I don't know what's upstairs. This one of the commanders. Captain William Davis of the late of the 10th Cavalry. Married to Fort Concho in 1878. Nothing about whether he's a commander. Sewing machine in here. Looks 
like this is a map of 1889 map of Fort Concho with handwritten labeling and this must have been the commander's actual office where he had his desk and all have no idea if this cabinetry is original to this room. Oh, it was a post library and reading room. Boy, howdy. Don't ever trust me yet. <laughs> I'm always making assumptions. Certainly was wrong on this side. Okay, criticize me in the comments below. I'm always willing to be honest. Makes me wonder. The library. You have to go through the commander's office, but I guess there is another door here. Was the library primarily for the benefit of the commanding officer? So, so many questions. All right, that's about all we can cover here. Let's go to the next building that's open. Now this building on the fort site is not only one of the first buildings that was built at the fort, being of wood and all would have been easier to put up very quickly, but it remains to this day the oldest building in this whole county. I'm currently in the northern wing of the fort hospital. This is the only portion of the hospital that is open at this present time. Take a peek in here. And got a box of looks like rough gravel. A scoop. dirt or sand in a scoop and a lamp and a double holder latrine. Aha. So no open pit down below. Let's put in metal line drawers. Which then are removed and replaced, I suppose. And it looks like there's porcelain covered pail in the back there. Interesting. And over here, it's like this is the bathing area. Spitting, lantern, a liniment. Shaving station, wash up station. Well, the wash up station is over here. I keep bumping into things. It's my camera case. <laughs> I go outside, give you a look out there. Across the way, we've got the chapel and school. There's the front of the hospital. Too bad we couldn't see more of it, especially the surgical areas. That would be interesting to look at. But this appears to be the largest and most impressive building on the fort site. All right, so now we're in the schoolhouse and chapel. I find it interesting. These railings here, along with a gate right in front. Very large windows once again. Good for lighting during the daytime. Interesting the way the tables are arranged. I guess that sort of makes sense. You wouldn't want students to have their back turned to the lectern up here. A blackboard, flags. And of course, which we can't see, 
very well anyway. Another one of those small cast iron heaters. Now, I suspect the students would have had to been soldiers. Wouldn't that be logical to you? You can cook on that stove. I wonder if they made coffee. Oh, I just noticed something. Look over there in the corner on top of a stool. <laughs> I wonder if there's a historical record which helped you guide the curator to place a dunce hat and stool in the corner of the room. That's wild. And just west of the chapel and school are the officers' quarters homes. Where the privileged officers got to spend their time while they were at the fort. This is on the south side of the parade grounds. And as you can see, there's a number of them that go clear down to South Oak Street, which is the street you would use to get to this site. I have been told that some of these structures were actually rented out for families to live in for quite a period of time, several decades, which helped to preserve these structures. You've got people living in them. Uh, you're going to need improvements. You're going to need plumbing. You're going to need electricity. So some of these structures actually had some of those improvements made to them already. Maybe I should kind of walk around back instead of going down the front. As a matter of fact, I'll go out here, show you a better view of all of the officers' quarters lined up here. There are some of these that are open to the public where we can look in. I'm interested in kind of walking behind here see which of these have had modern improvements made to them. Well, once again, my thoughts and theories are possibly unfounded because what we're looking at right now are electrical facilities on the back of the chapel and school house there. We just got through looking at and uh, well, that certainly is in period. This is the Prince Springer house that uh, we just looked at and walked away from. There's telephone and air conditioning facilities back here. Next door, we've got pretty much the same thing. Now these buildings, most all of them, quite a number of them are rented out time to time, really not to live in, but uh, as meeting places for groups, organizations, clubs. Now this is how I'm used to looking at old forts in the west. Ruins. I say this is one of the best preserved forts I have seen yet. Information board here. And a cautionary sign. We're going to continue walking our way down here. I think I'll make my last stop at the commander's home at the end. Ooh, looks like there's a museum of telephony housed in this building. Small plaque here explaining what's going on. Dates from 1990. Pause the video if you want to read more. I didn't plan to stop here, but let's see if it's open. Okay. There's 
a guest book here. I'll sign it as I leave. Display cases. Second experimental model. <laughs> that looks familiar. I think I've seen that contraption before. I'm not going to go into these in depth. I just figured I'd give you a hint of the things you will see in here. Let's continue on to the left. I remember this was living quarters for officers. Switchboard, teletype machine. Looks like that might be a switchboard for a company with lots of offices. Actual telephone pole. <laughs> Insulators, historic photograph. And you know, that fireplace has been used a time or two. More examples of phones from the 60s, 70s, 50s. Some phones look like they were rather complicated. Come check this out. Manufacturer Western Electric item D9A current flow test set. Okay, checking the wires. At first, I thought it was like a primitive fax machine. <laughs> Who all had a princess phone? There's a mobile phone. Wall bones. Small switch blower board. That might be used in a company office back in the day before push buttons were used. Some of you are bound to be interested in some of these things. <laughs> some of you kids out there have never even seen any phones that look similar to this at all. I just happen to be old enough. Or I haven't seen all these models, but I've seen quite a few of them. If you watch some old Andy Griffith stories, Mayberry, you will see some examples of phones being used such as that. There's another room here. Switchboards. Switchboard operator. A lot of women got employment opportunities. As a matter of fact, there's a switching office right there. Job opportunities for women. I think it's great that these instruments have been K 
kept for future generations to be able to see instead of just throwing away going to a landfill oh boy wouldn't you like to have a telephone ringer like that by your bedside <laughs> that's crazy here's another photograph with a bunch of operators at work I had my hands full when I came in. I haven't signed the book yet. I'll do that next. <laughs> All right, now we are standing in front of the living quarters for the fort commander. I've been told that the architecture here has been preserved as much as possible, even though some of it has been restored. Look at that old knob. It was supposed to have been open. Doesn't look like it is. I'll try another door. We got to look inside one of these living quarters. I guess we did see the uh, telephone museum over there. Telephony museum. That had a corporate sponsored for it as well. Texas Historical Survey sign there and looks like that one's not open. So, okay. I guess we'll have to settle with that. Way across the way there. Oops. Way across the way. This is Visitor Center where this whole thing began. Thank you very much for joining me.